Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. Now it's Easter Sunday, and we're celebrating the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has conquered death and he has conquered hell. And being our leader, you know, they say, if the blind leads the blind, all will fall into the pit. Our leader is not blind. He's a conqueror. That means we too will conquer. And if he resurrected, the Bible says, is the first fruit. And likewise, where to follow, we will all resurrect. So it's a time for Christians to reassure themselves that Jesus is worth serving, is worth following. You know, sometimes even in a church, you make a praiser. I've been in this church for 10 years, and in my 10 years, have I prospered? Has my spiritual life improved? Have I known God better? Easter is another appraisal time, and I can tell you Jesus is worth not just falling, he's worth dying for. We will resurrect. We will live forever on the streets of gold. Paul said, if only in this life, we have hope that we are of all men most miserable. So he has given us hope both in this life and in the world to come. So I greet you. Happy Resurrection Day and happy Easter celebration. And our message today is to further buttress the benefits of Easter, what happened on that faithful day, and how does it relate to us in this time and age. There are just a few things I want us to look at concerning the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. Um, some time ago, a young schoolgirl asked me a question because we're doing Bible school uh, Bible study in the secondary school. So she asked me, "Is Jesus God?" I said, "Yes." Then she said, "If He's God, how come He has a mother?" That like gave does can God be given birth to? I said, no. I said, then how come he was giving birth to? I said, wow. I said, then she said, number two, how come he was killed? Can God be killed? I said, no. So what happened? And I had to sit her down and I had to explain quite a lot of things, which I actually believe they're sincere questions that quite a lot of Christians might not even be able to answer. And the Bible says we must be ready to give an answer concerning the hope that is set before us. People of other faith have issues with it. One said to me, I don't understand how your God can meet a woman and we say probably not really marry her and then give birth to a child and they call him his son. It doesn't make sense. But there are one or two things I want us to put to rest this morning and it's about the Lord Jesus. First, Jesus was incarnated. He was never created. And I'll be explaining a lot of things in that light this morning. Um, Jesus was incarnated. There's something they call incarnate. If you've heard of reincarnation, reincarnation is a doctrine among a lot of religious groups. They believe in reincarnation. And they call reincarnation as the spirit of a dead person returns back to another body to continue another life here on earth. So when people say reincarnation, a lot of religions, in even some people in this part of the world believe in reincarnation, they use the Yoruba word abiku, or they call it emery, meaning somebody who has died. Even some call their children iyabo, meaning mother has returned, or baba tunde, meaning baba, tunde means has returned. Baba has returned. So unconsciously, many people believe in reincarnation. So reincarnation is that person has died, probably died before his time and didn't fulfill his purpose. So his spirit and his soul has returned back to another body in an, some believe, some religion believe if the person didn't live well, 
he will return as a cow or a cart. Oh, goodness me. And he'll be punished. And some believe he'll just return into another body, he can return to the same family. Maybe they lost a loved one. And then he will continue his assignment here on earth. Now, that is a doctrine of Satan. It's a doctrine of demons. The Bible says it is appointed unto men once to die and after that judgment. So reincarnation is unscriptural. It is not in line with the scriptures and it is against the Christian faith. So it's a lie. It is not true and it is a deceit. If someone dies, he either goes to heaven if he has Jesus in his life as his Lord and Savior and if he has rejected Jesus as the only begotten Son of God, I can tell you he is burning in hellfire forever and ever. There is no way out of there. So, but there is incarnation. Incarnation. What is incarnation? Incarnation is the ability to transfer the spirit and the soul of a being into another object or another body or another container for the purpose of using that being in another form. Now, God forbid, I even heard once, my grandmother used to say it, that they used to have a masquerade in their times in the village, not in city. You don't, have, you don't say that in the city. How true it is, I don't know. Someone once said to me that she witnessed it that it's true, that the masquerade would change to a tiger. I said, so when he changes the tiger, what do you do? Of course, they all run. And then he changes back to the masquerade. I'm not sure whether he was just using whatever magic or deceit. I don't know. I don't know. But because incarnation exists, it is by incarnation that angels take the form of a human being. That's why the Bible says, be careful to entertain strangers, for some have entertained angels unawares. Now, in heaven, if that angel comes to you wearing an Ankara dress and he ministers to you and you go, in heaven he's not going to wear an Ankara dress. He's going to wear white. He's going to look different. So what happened is that that angel incarnated to another form to be able to relate with that person. So the incarnation is scriptural. Even there are demons in the um, tribulation who will incarnate. The Bible says that in the book of Genesis, just before the time of Noah, that the sons of God came down, those were demons, changed form and interacted with the sons of men and they had children. And they had children. Now, those, de those demons won't come in demonic form with tail. No, no, no. They're going to change form to human looking form. And then they can have a um, relationship with people and then they give birth. And that's part of why God destroyed the first world. Now, Jesus was incarnated. He was God from the very beginning. He was never created. He is the word of God. John chapter 1 verse 1 tells us that in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. The Bible says all things were made by him and there was nothing that was not made, but all things were made by him. In him was a life and the life was the light of men. And that word became flesh. So that word was a spirit. It was in heaven. It was moving as the word of God in heaven. In what form, I don't know. So Jesus did not exist when Mary gave birth to him. No, he existed before Adam was. That's why he said, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. The Bible says Melchizedek was a priest that met Abraham in Genesis 14. And that Melchizedek, the Bible says, is the prince of peace, Shalom, Salem, without father, without mother, without brother, without sister, without beginning, without end. That was referred to as Jesus, who met Abraham and Jesus preaching. He said, your father Abraham rejoiced to see me. He saw me and he was happy. And the Jews asked him, said, you are not even 50. So how did you meet Abraham? They didn't understand that they were dealing with an incarnated being who existed before time, who existed before the world was created, who was decompressed. Jesus was decompressed into a seed, incarnated, fused into a seed. 
Then God gave that seed to Gabriel. He said, take this seed and go and meet a virgin called Mary and plant that seed into her womb. Now, like I said, Jesus, now that masquerade that turned, if it's true, into a tiger didn't begin life as a tiger. He began life as a little boy that was born of, uh, of parents, a man and a woman. He grew and then got into magic and some enchantments and now transformed into a tiger and then changed back into a human being. He incarnated into a tiger. I've heard about it. I was told about it. A few people who witnessed said they saw it in the village. Then when they were young, the masquerade would spin, 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 make a loud noise and change into an animal. And people would run. They were worshipping it. And after a while, it would change back to the masquerade. And at the end of the day, the masquerade would remove the cloth. It's a human being inside of it. When he changes to that tiger, his life didn't begin as the tiger. His life began as a human being. He incarnated into a tiger. And after a while, went back into his normal form as a human being and continued his life. So what Jesus did is that he incarnated into a human being. He was not a human being. Now, why was he born by Mary? As a human being, if he was not born by a human being, a woman, he would not have legitimacy on earth. So God needed a man on earth to rescue humanity and he searched the whole earth, the whole humanity. He couldn't find one person worthy, so he had to send Jesus. Now we're going to look at a few scriptures. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, 1 Timothy chapter 3, I'll read verse 16. And he reads, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Now, normally, John 4, 24, Jesus said, God is a spirit. And remember when Jesus resurrected and he was walking on the sea, he said, no, 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 sorry. Before he resurrected, when he was walking on the sea and the disciples was on the boat in the Gospel of John, they shouted, he's a ghost. He said, no, I'm not a ghost. He said, see me. He said, a ghost has no flesh and bones such as I have. So spirits don't have flesh and bones like us. So when he said God is a spirit, Jesus was a spirit, he incarnated and he manifested in the flesh. Justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, returned back as God. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Coyote Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Suruleri Lagos. Get a copy today. Amen. He incarnated to a human being, became flesh. But he didn't want to incarnate into him. In John 10, he said, I'm not a thief like Satan. Satan didn't come into the earth through the door. He came through the window. That's a thief. What is the door to the earth? Through the womb of a woman. So to have legitimacy on earth, he came through the womb of Mary. But to show that he was incarnated, the life of a baby is not in the eggs of a woman. It's in the sperm of the man. That's why the Bible says, when Abraham paid tithe to Melchizedek, Levi was in his loins, not in the loins of Sarah, in the loins of Abraham. So for a child to come, the sperm must fuse with the egg. The sperm is the life. That is the child. That is the child. Is the life. It's in the sperm. And in Jesus' conception, there was no sperm. So it is the spirit of Jesus that took the form of the sperm that went into the womb of Mary.
to be able to be nurtured and come out as a baby. So, Jesus was not really a normal human being like you and I, incarnated as a spirit into the flesh, but gave legitimacy to his flesh on the earth by being born of a woman. There was a time they asked him when he was in the temple, he was beating, people were selling, instead of worshiping God, they came to the temple to do business. Even now, church, some people don't even really go to worship. They go to church to do business, to do all sorts. And he whipped them and drove. So the Pharisees came to meet him and said, who gave you the authority to do what you're doing? They need to ask him. He said, I will ask you the authority of John. Where did it come from? From heaven or from men? And the Pharisees thought and said to themselves, he will say from heaven. Then he will tell them, why didn't you believe him? He says from men, the people will stone them because they believe John was a prophet of God. So they said, we cannot tell you. Then he said, neither will I tell you. But the true answer he would have given to them was, my authority comes first as a human being. I'm a human being. Number two, I was born of Jewish parents. Of course, um, Joseph was his stepfather. I was John, born of Jewish parents. So I am a full-blooded Jew like you. Number two, I went to the school of the Torah. I, 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 I recited the uh, five, first five book of Moses. So I'm qualified to be in the temple as a Jew. Now, this is my father's house. I'm also anointed by God, evidenced by the miracles you see. So I'm a prophet. Now, this is the house of God, and I have a right to protect it from marabouts. So my authority comes as a Jew, and my anointing is endorsed by the works of God you see done in my hand. That would have been a simple answer. Just like you, as a Nigerian, you accost somebody who is doing something wrong, and he doesn't look like Nigerian. And you ask him, who gave, who, where did you get the authority to stand on the road and be blocking people? And he says, no, I may not look like a Nigerian. My father is a Nigerian. I was born in Nigeria. So I'm a full-blooded Nigerian like you. And as a citizen of Nigeria, I have a right to maintain order unto the police. And he can give you such an answer. So that's what Jesus would have simply told them. If he wasn't born of Mary, he would not have legitimate rights as a human being. Amen. Now, in Hebrews 10, chapter 10, verse 5, it gives us how he got the body he's using because he had to be incarnated into a body. And he said, wherefore, when he cometh into the world, that Jesus, he said, sacrifice and offering, that would not, but a body you prepared for me. Now, all our bodies are prepared from, ultimately from the ground. Because Adam's body was made from the ground. That's why he said, dust we are, and to dust we shall return. And that's why when a man dies, after about four, two, three years, you go to the grave, you find out that the... Um, body has turned to sand. That's where our body is. It's clay. But Jesus' body was not made from clay. It was made from the word of God. And so, but he had a body like you and I, but his own body was not made from clay. It was made from the word of God. They prepared a special body. Now, when they prepared that special, they now took his spirit and his soul and transferred it into that body. Then he began to operate inside that body as a human being. Now, that body gave him limitations. Because inside that body, there were things he couldn't do. He couldn't appear and disappear as a spirit. He couldn't pass through the wall as a human being. You can't pass through a wall. He was sleeping and God doesn't sleep. Because of that body, it brought some measure of weakness. That's why he said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. That body is weak. So it brought weakness into his divine attributes and capped his divine attributes. So he couldn't manifest his divine attributes. So he had to rely on the Holy Spirit to do things. Because that body, if, I, if you're changed into a cockroach, for example, I don't pray so, you find that there are some things you cannot do again as a human being. You can't open the door as a cockroach. You need a human being to open the door for you as a cockroach to pass. So when Jesus fused into that body, he couldn't behave as God again. That body brought him limitations. He can't pass through the wall. He can't appear and disappear. He can't do a lot of things. So he had to function like you and I do. He was still God inside that container. That's what Hebrews 10 5 was trying to tell us. To further buttress what I'm saying, in Mark chapter 1, we're just trying to 
make you to understand that we're dealing with a, a being that was never created, never. He is God. He's the son of God by virtue of relationship, not by virtue of birth. He was the son of God before he came. And he's still the son of God after he has left. He didn't become the son of God because he was given birth to by Mary. No, that's not what made him the son of God. He became the son of God by virtue of relationship. The relationship he had with his father from eternity. Amen. Now in Mark chapter 1. Now, I don't take testimonies from demons. But sometimes... The demons too attest to one of two things. In the book of James, he said the demons believe in God. That means it's not a lie they believe in God. Yet, they tremble. They believe God, yet they tremble. In Mark chapter 1, Jesus was preaching in the temple. Now, the power of the message was given was so strong that a man that had a demon in him, that demon couldn't stand the power of that word. That word was beginning to torment him. So he screamed. And this is the demon speaking in verse 24. Sorry, let me back up to verse 22. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority, not as the scribes. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone, what have we to do with thee, Jesus of Nazareth? Now, that doesn't say much, Jesus of Nazareth. Are thou come to destroy us? I know thee. That means it's one demon. He didn't say we. I know thee, who you are, the Holy One of God. Now, he said, I know you. How did he know him? Remember, Satan and his demons once stayed in heaven. They were in heaven. Satan was the cherubim and the head of all the angelic hosts. He was the anointed cherub. Ezekiel 27 tells us that. He was the anointed cherub in heaven until he fell. When he fell, he fell with one third of the angels. I don't know what he used to persuade those angels to leave the Almighty in his awesome glory and follow him. I don't know what he used. But whatever he used, you need to be very careful in dealing with that guy. And I understand why the Bible says, be sober, be vigilant. He said, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the wiles. I don't know how he deceived those angels and they followed him. In the presence of the Almighty God, the glory of and the awesome omnipotent himself. What he did to pursue them, I don't know. But whatever he did, then I understand why God said, put on the whole armor of God to be able to withstand his tricks. Now, the angel is saying, I, the demon said, I know you. I remember you. You are the Holy One of God. Amen. Meaning, they recognize his spirit as God. They recognize this is God. We can see into his spirit. This is the almighty, but in a container of a human flesh. Just to buttress that Jesus was incarnated. The same thing happened in Luke 4, 33 to 34. But there's something I want to say here. Um, the demon, and this is not part of the message, but I believe it will bless us. And sometimes it's part of why some people's prayers don't get answered. The demon said, you are Jesus of Nazareth. That was wrong. In Acts chapter 3, the Bible says, Peter and John were walking into the temple through the gate beautiful, and they met a man who had been impotent from birth at the gate who begged for arms. I guess I should read this just to point something very important to you. Acts chapter 3 from verse 1 to 6. And I'll jump to verse 3. Who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple asked for arms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him, but John said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive money, obviously. Verse 6, Peter said to him, Silver and gold have I none. But what I have, I'm going to give to thee. Now listen to what he said. In the name of of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, not Jesus of Nazareth. There are many Jesus of Nazareth. There is only one Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He said, rise up and walk. Many times when you pray in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, it will not work because you have not identified the Jesus you are talking about, except to say in the name of Jesus, the only 
begotten son of the most high God. They dance work. And sometimes people's prayers are not answered. You saw the tricks of those demons. He said, you are Jesus of Nazareth. Now, there are other Jesus that when people were named Jesus in Israel in those days, and it's possible one or two of them may be from Nazareth. So there are more than one Jesus of Nazareth, but there's only one Jesus Christ, the Christ, the anointed, the one that was sent by the Father. It's only one from Nazareth. So please take note, when you are praying, don't use Jesus of Nazareth, it may not work. Use Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Um, just, just, just by the way. So we just confirmed that Jesus was not created. He was incarnated. So to fulfill that earthly mission, he had to come through the womb of a woman and he needed a stepfather which Joseph filled into those shoes. So he was incarnated. He was never created. Let me repeat. Jesus was incarnated, fused into a container that is a flesh, a human being, a form, and that flesh was not made from soil, from the word of God. In order to fulfill the purpose on that, when he finished that assignment, he returned back to God. And that's why 1 Timothy 3.16 says, God was made manifest in the flesh, received back into glory. And like I said earlier, reincarnation is a lie of the kingdom of darkness. It does not exist. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you don't give up. Faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.